Hey everyone, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and today I'm going to show you how to install the homebrew menu on your Nintendo Switch running 5.0.2 firmware and 4.0 firmwares. And we're going to be doing this by installing custom firmware that's in the very early stages by Team Atmosphere that includes this homebrew menu. So, let's do this. <laughs> So before I proceed, I'd like to let everyone know when you're modding a console or you're doing stuff like this, there's always a chance you could break your console or even lose online features such as eShop or online gameplay. So if you're looking to do this, proceed at your own risk. So there's multiple ways now to get into recovery mode on our Nintendo Switches, which gives us backdoor access and allows us to install either custom firmware or various other mods. One of the easiest ways is to use a 3D printed jig with parts from a micro USB cable glued inside of it. And I did talk about this a little bit in my previous video, but not everyone has a 3D printer or wants to deal with buying one of these. Another option would be to use a paper clip, which I cut and bent those ends on, and then I try to make contact with pins 1 and 10. And I have got this method to work, but it is a pain in the butt, and that alignment has to be just right. So inside that Joy-Con slot is 10 different pins, with the first pin being closest to the front of the console. Another option you can do is to use a chunk of wire. Uh, for this demo, I'm going to be using a DuPont cable and I'll insert one end of this in between some metal fins on top of the console, and then the other end I'll make contact with pin number 10. And this method does work, but not the easiest. Another option that exists is people have been taking apart their Joy-Cons and taking pin number 9 and bending that over pin number 10. But this actually damages your Joy-Con, and I'm not too thrilled about doing that. So I figured out a very simple alternative to hack your Joy-Con without damaging it, just by using a chunk of tin foil. So I'm going to start by ripping off a small chunk of tin foil, maybe about half inch by half inch. Then I'm going to keep folding that in half until it ends up being about one millimeter wide by half inch long. So the distance between each pin on your Joy-Con is about half a millimeter. So if we make this one millimeter wide, we'll be able to bridge two pins together. And here's an up close look at the Joy-Con. You're going to have to be in a well lit area to see these pins correctly. But what we're going for is nine and 10 located right here. We want to bridge those two pins together and we're going to use this piece of tin foil to do that. Now I'm going to take that piece of tin foil and bend it directly in half and then place it on the Joy-Con where pins 9 and 10 are located. And you want to make sure it's only coming in contact with pins 9 and 10. So it should look something like this. I've got that piece of tin foil, half of it's on the pins and then half of it's underneath. Once you have that in perfect position, you can go ahead and tape that in place with just a piece of scotch tape. And the first couple times I tried this, I didn't even tape it in place. I just kept that Joy-Con nice and steady when I put it inside the slot and it worked. But the tape will make things easier because it'll keep that piece of foil from moving. But you want to make sure you trim that piece of tape. You want to make sure none of the edges are overhanging that black area. So I went ahead and reboot the console. And with this custom firmware, every time you do a normal reboot, it does erase that custom firmware. So now when I click on that album icon, the homebrew menu is gone. So I'm going to have to reinstall that custom firmware to make it pop back up. And that might change here in the future, but as of now, that's how it works. So to install my custom firmware, I'm going to start by turning the console all the way off. So I'm going to hold that power button, then select turn off. Now I'm going to install my modded Joy-Con into the Nintendo Switch. And this does have to be on that right Joy-Con for this to work. Now I'm going to boot my console into recovery mode. And I'm going to do that by holding that volume up button, then pressing the power button and holding those both for about two and a half seconds. As long as your console remains on the black screen, you should successfully be in recovery mode. If a Nintendo Switch logo pops up and it starts to boot up like normal, you are not in recovery mode and you're gonna have to make some adjustments on that tinfoil or your jig or whatever you're using to go into recovery mode. So to install this custom firmware, I'm gonna be using my Android phone and using an app called NX Loader. And if you're looking to install this app, this will be available in the video description down below. And you can install this by either side loading from your computer if you know how to do that, or you can install this directly to your phone by using that link down below, which is what I did. So this app allows your phone to communicate with your Nintendo Switch and install the necessary files. And these are gonna be the necessary files you'll need if you're using 5.0.2 firmware. You're gonna to wanna to download two different files. You're gonna download the ST file zip, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up those files and drag them to the root of the SD card for your Nintendo Switch. And then we're also going to download the payload bin. And for that payload bin, I downloaded that directly to my phone. And if your Nintendo Switch is running 4.0 firmware, this is the link you're going to want to use instead. 
and it's going to be the same routine here. You're going to have to download both those files, the SD file zip and the payload bin. And here's a look at the contents of that SD file zip on the right side of my screen. And these are all the files that you want to copy over to the root of the SD card on your Nintendo Switch. And if you're looking to add more apps or emulators for your Switch, you can add those here too. What you'll do is you'll make a folder called Switch, and inside there is where you're going to place your emulators or apps that are in a .nro format. And you can find these files at the Switch Brew App Store, and I'll make sure to post a link to them too. And I did explain how to add apps to a Switch folder in a lot more detail in one of my previous videos, how to install the Homebrew menu on 3.00 firmware. So if you want to check that out, you can. And if you're looking for a different way to install the custom firmware besides using an Android device like I'm using, you can use this program here called the Web Fuse Launcher. And I'll make sure to post a link for this too. And this program is designed to be used with a Chrome web browser via a Linux operating system, a Chromebook operating system, and I've heard some MacBooks are working. But unfortunately, it's not designed to work with Windows. So this program is pretty simple to use. You're going to select that payload bin that you downloaded earlier. And then once your Nintendo Switch is in recovery mode, you're going to connect a USB-C cable to your Switch and then the other end to your computer and then click on do your thing. And if everything goes well, it'll start booting up that custom firmware. But for this video, I'm going to be using my Android phone. So this app's also very simple to use. Under the config tab, I'm going to select my primary payload, which I downloaded earlier to my phone. And this was fairly easy to find. After downloading the payload directly to my phone, all I had to do was select recent and it pulled right up. Now I'm going to connect a USB-C cable to my phone using a micro OTG adapter. And you can find adapters like this at your local Best Buy, but I bought mine on eBay and they were only about two bucks a piece. So my Switch is already in recovery mode, so now it's time to connect my USB-C side of the cable to the Switch. And right after connecting that cable, I'll get a prompt on my phone asking if I want to open that USB device, and I'll select OK. And now the custom firmware boot process has started. And to navigate through these menus, you're going to use the volume button to move up and down, and then the power button to select. So I'm going to select Launch Firmware, and then move down to Custom Firmware, the CFW, and then hit Select again. Now my custom firmware has booted, and once the logo pops up here, I can disconnect that USB-C cable. And now the custom firmware should be installed and running on my console. So now it's time for a test. So we're going to get to our main menu here, and then click on the album icon, and that should boot my homebrew menu. And on mine, I've already got a bunch of apps and emulators already pre-installed on the micro SD card. But the first time you open this, you're only going to have the homebrew menu. You're not going to have any of these apps or emulators. So if you want to add those, you're going to have to make that switch folder, then add the .nro files to that folder so you have those apps and emulators that will appear right here. So right now, this is just the very early stages of this custom firmware, so a lot of these emulators and apps are not compatible yet. All these apps and emulators were originally designed to work with Nintendo Switch 3.0.0 firmware. So it's going to take a little bit of time to get these apps updated to where they work properly on the newer firmwares. But there is a few games and emulators that do work right now. Like this port of Flashback, it seems to work pretty well. Also working is the portable Final Burn Alpha emulator, which is an arcade and console emulator. So we'll go ahead and test this out and try a game. Uh, but another thing I'd like to mention is, remember earlier I tied the two pins together, pins 9 and 10 for the Joy-Con. Um, I don't seem to see any issues with the Joy-Con working. Everything seems to function just like it should. But I do have another Joy-Con I could switch out if I need to, so I can just leave that foil on my Joy-Con. But like I said, that Joy-Con seems to function and work just like it should, so I'm not sure if there's any reason to swap out the Joy-Con or remove that foil. And if I run into any issues with the Joy-Con not working properly or hear about anything, I'll be sure to let you know. So this emulator seems to work pretty well, but it automatically separates Joy-Con 1 and 2 to first and second player, even if they're both attached to the console. So I have to detach one of the controllers so I can play the game. And as far as the custom firmware goes, it definitely has some issues at this point. A couple of the big issues is that every time you reboot the console, the custom firmware disappears. So you're going to have to reconnect that to your phone or your computer, then reinstall that custom firmware every time you reboot. Another big issue is when you push that power button on the top to make it go into sleep mode, a lot of times it freezes in sleep mode and you can't get that screen to open back up. And the only thing you can do is just hold that power button for about 12 seconds and it either turns off the console or reboots the console. And then from that point you're going to have to reinstall that custom firmware again. So that's a pretty big issue, 
But like I said earlier, this is the early stages of this custom firmware, and it will get better. And one app I'd like to mention that'd be really handy to add to that SD card for your Nintendo Switch is called the Switch App Store. And with this app, you can open this up and download various other apps, games, and emulators. So it's a very handy app to have for your homebrew menu. But as I stated earlier, a lot of these emulators are not working yet because they're optimized to run on 3.00 firmware, but I would expect these to be up and running probably within the next month. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. If you liked that video, please click that like button. If you wanna hear more from me, please subscribe. And if you wanna help support the channel, you can now find me on Facebook and Patreon. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.